Hello, my name is Peter Hoffis, and I'm the Director of Quantitative Research at RavenPack. This presentation will provide you with an overview of the paper, News Movers and Shakers in Finance, a study which can be requested from the RavenPack website. While earlier research has examined the link between stock returns, the volatility and news flows, I propose a new approach for measuring public information about companies as captured by news liquidity. Traditionally, news flow is defined as a simple account of stories where a company is mentioned. In contrast, the idea of news liquidity is to capture novel and actionable informational content about companies based on key events. In a normal day, a company like Apple will see a lot of media buzz impacting its news flow. In contrast, news liquidity, as introduced in the study, would only get impacted by an actual company-specific event, such as an executive getting fired, company being sued, or a company reporting negative earnings. Ranking companies based on news liquidity are find a 20% turnover from one year to the next, both amongst the top 100 and top 1,000 news liquid companies, indicating that companies do move in and out of the media spotlight. Given this fact and that news liquidity as well as news flow suffers from large cap bias, perhaps what's interesting is not the news liquidity levels themselves, but whether companies are ranking up or down relative to other companies. For instance, moving from position 200 to 100 in the news liquidity ranking within a given year, indicating that the company is going through a period of abnormal news liquidity. Without knowing if news about a company is good or perhaps even bad, news liquidity seems most relevant when trying to predict future price volatility. This figure depicts the average daily realized volatility for the companies falling into the respective quantiles of the absolute abnormal news liquidity distribution. I consider whether the volatility in the following year is greater for movers than for non-movers, which may be expected as more information for companies with abnormal activity needs to get incorporated by the market. As can be observed, generally I find that the more extreme a mover, reflected by a higher quantile number as shown on the x-axis, the greater price volatility in the following period, in this case over the following year. This pattern seems to be quite consistent over the 10-year backtesting period, with 2010 being somewhat of an outlier. With the introduction of sentiment, I'm able to have a more directional view on stock prices. Since the price reaction can be expected to depend on whether the company has recently moved in or out of the media spotlight, I distinguish between companies ranking up, caused by a period of significant events, and companies ranking down, caused by a return to more normal news liquidity levels. As depicted in this picture, I find the top ranking companies according to sentiment generally outperform the bottom ranking ones in the year after they have been classified as companies ranking down. Furthermore, it seems that one can extract a strength element from the sentiment ranking resulting in greater spreads between companies with more extreme sentiment. In this picture, the black line represents the spread between the top and bottom 25, the red line top and bottom 40, green line top and bottom 50, and blue line top and bottom 100. Based on these results, it seems that companies that have recently moved out of the media spotlight still get the focus of the market. More specifically, the market seems to be concerned about how these companies are portrayed in the news even after they return to more normal news liquidity levels. Moving in a little closer, I find that most of the spread is captured on the short side of the trade, indicating that negative sentiment is a stronger leading indicator of future underperformance than positive sentiment is a leading indicator of future outperformance. Looking at companies ranking up, I find a more sophisticated reaction pattern. Again, I've plotted the cumulative return spread between the top and bottom 25, 40, 50 and 100 stocks according to sentiment. In fact, it seems that certain periods occur where the market tend to either over or under react to news. Generally, I find an overreaction to positive news and an underreaction to negative news when markets have recently gone up, while the opposite seems to be the case in a declining market. 
Taking this into consideration, I find a similar picture for companies ranking up as with companies ranking down. Again, greater spreads between companies with more extreme sentiment. Based on this study, abnormal news liquidity seems a valuable addition to an existing investment or trading model framework with potential implications for stochastic volatility models or stock selection processes or it may even be, be interesting to move news liquidity up to an industry level. If interested in learning more about this study or about previous research, papers can be requested from the Ravenpack website. Likewise, if you are interested in evaluating any of our product offerings, feel free to contact one of our sales representatives. Thank you for listening in.